Hi guys, it's Chris with Microsoft here again with another exciting episode of Let's Tech. I'm going to do an update to a previously done video in my uh, What's New in Windows Server 2012 series. We talked a little bit about Replica and how Replica is a great little DR solution that we have where you can take a virtual machine and keep a copy of it offline on another Hyper-V server. Now go back and watch that video if you want some more specifics on how Replica works. What I wanted to do here is in Server 2012 the um, beta version, anyway, of uh, 2012 R2. Uh, we have a couple of improvements to the Replica server, and so I want to kind of cover a few of the changes that we have there. So what we've got are three uh, hypervisors, 9Z Blade 1, with some virtual machines running inside of those, and we've got 9Z Blade 2 and 9Z Blade 10 that we'll be using for this demonstration. Now. The uh, the first thing that I wanted to point out was uh, something that was commonly requested. People wanted to see the replication health status right up in the screen. This isn't on by default. It's uh, something that you just add the column. As you can see, I have added the replication uh, health column in here so I can kind of see that right off. There was a, a few people that said, well, how can I tell if that VM is actually a replica and at a glance know what uh, status is. Well the answer to that question was click on it and go down here to the replication tab. Uh, a few people didn't want that extra step which I completely understand. Uh, so what we, what has happened is we've added this uh, this tab. I'm fairly sure it wasn't on the previous version of Hyper-V. I'd need to go check and see if that was there. Maybe I just didn't notice it. Uh, but it's definitely there now so we can we can see it here. So, very similar to before, in order for Replica to work, you have to turn it on at the at the hypervisor level, and then you got to enable it at the VM level. Why? Because you need to tell Hyper-V that it is going to be a Replica server, and then you need to go tell the virtual machine to go replicate itself. These are set at the, uh, at the virtual machine. These are... Um, uh, settings that they'd carry around with them. Like if, for instance, if I were to move this guy over to another Hyper-V server, like to the 9Z Blade 2, for instance, he'll carry his replica settings around with him. So the settings for getting uh, Hyper-V's replica turned on are pretty simple. And again, I have a video that covers that. It's basically a checkbox. Tell it how you want to uh, authenticate whether or not you're going to split these up so that you're uh, accepting only replica instances from other virtual uh, Hyper-V environments, specific ones, or uh, anybody. In this case, I'm picking anybody. And I don't remember how I have these hard drives set up. Okay, yeah, it's just one drive, so this location ought to be fine for me. If you do end up doing something like wildcarding out and... and um, saying, hey, I only want specific server servers, I can actually say uh, star um, hyper v dot nine z dot local server name is not in a fully qualified domain name. Yeah, there we go. See, we should be able to, oh, I guess it's only the host name. So what I can say is anybody from 9z.local, and then we would put those maybe in 9z. Now, why would you do that? Well, you might do that if you uh, have several different customers that you're going to have send you their Hyper-V replicas, and you want to keep the most segmented into different groups. Uh, so I'm going to keep that less complex just by keeping that radio button here. Say, hey, anybody who sends me a replica, I'll take it. And that's really all there is that needs to be configured other than the firewall rules, uh, which is just opening port 80 or 443, depending on what you picked as far as uh, authentication. Once that's up, your replica uh, can be sent over here. So I'm going to take this uh, 9Z Blade 10. You'll notice that I have one. This 9Z DC1 does not currently have replica configured on it. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, turn that so that it's sending a replica copy back to Blade 1. So that's a pretty straightforward process, very similar to before, but there are some new settings. You can see that when I right-click on the virtual machine, it says Enable Replication. It's a little different than this other guy here. This one says Replication. This has already been configured. 
and we've already talked about what most of these are here so uh, I'll put a link in the description to the other video in case you missed the one that really goes into the hardcore elements of how Hyper-V's replica works but I want to show you some of the changes so when I go into enable replication like before the first thing it wants to know is hey where are we gonna send this so we just turned on replication capabilities for 9z blade 1 and it should pick up the settings and it did if you see a yellow bang down here that says couldn't detect the settings your wizard is probably gonna fail it just means more than likely you've got your firewall turned on uh, without a, a firewall rule enabled or uh, just something missing uh, where it can't detect the settings. It should be able to go out to that server and figure out what you plugged in here for your settings. We click Next. This is the choice of what uh, what you want to do as far as which drives. So let's say that you've got four drives on this uh, this virtual machine and one of them is just a throwaway drive a really big drive full of maybe ISOs or something that you don't necessarily need to send over to your DR site uh, you could uncheck that and then keep that kind of traffic off uh, and just know that when you do bring that up in the DR site you will not have those drives so you you can only decide this once if you ever change your mind about this or need to add a drive you're gonna have to destroy replication and redo this wizard at this point in time this is the only time you get to make this choice just like before this is new so this is something that immediately people started requesting. So even in my previous video where I said it was hard-coded for five minutes, in R2 we've taken away that hard-coded requirement. You actually have a little more flexibility here. There have been some people who didn't want the five-minute uh, replication interval. What I mean by that is every five minutes this virtual machine, any changes that have happened on those drives would get compressed, bottled up, and sent over to the DR site and there were a few people that said well I want to change that to be every uh, you know every hour or every 10 seconds well what we did was we took the most common requests and we've given you the option to actually have this at a 30 second interval keeping the DR site up to date or if you want to cut the bandwidth down a little bit um, you could you could push that out to 15 minutes so uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and check the uh, 30 second interval here which means every 30 seconds anything that changes on that virtual machine is going to wind up sending a copy of it over to its DR site now just like before we have we have the same kind of choices the layout is the same in the wizard it changes just a teeny bit in the VM uh, what this means is I can keep up to 24 hours worth of snapshots out at the DR site so if at uh, at any given time I needed to roll back and turn on the VM it's there but with this bullet point if I need to roll back in time like maybe whatever problem caused whatever issue we're having happened at midnight and I find it at 6 o'clock in the morning I could actually go back up to 24 snapshots one taken every hour and recover to maybe 9 o'clock in the evening the previous day by doing this also gives me the capability to bring over VFS snapshots if I have any of those running I'm going to keep this simple right now. Um, how do I want to get this VM over to that uh, hypervisor? I can either do it right now. I could do it now but export this off to like a USB drive. Uh, or you could actually take it as a backup and use a restore over there. Um, I, would, uh, I would avoid using this third bullet point on initial configurations. There are times when you might do this after a disaster. But during the initial setup, I'd say stick to one of these. Either shoot it across your network or put it on a USB drive and take it out there to your DR site. We're going to do this. Doing the initial copy over the network doesn't have to be terribly impacting because you can actually schedule this to happen like tonight at 6 o'clock. So uh, if, if, you, if you're concerned about too much uh, bandwidth going out to your DR site during production hours, then hey, well this is a, a way you could schedule that. And it just asks you to confirm everything. Now when you click complete, we're going to get uh, a status window up here. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that up so we can actually see this happen. When I click finish, it's going to start enabling replication, starting sending out the uh, initial replication out to the other uh, server. We can go check on that. We should see it appear here, and it's receiving the uh, the VM now, and uh, and starting to build that replication relationship. Once it is finished, then we will have uh, some additional options that appear on this uh, this server. So we are, let me get out here and look at that. Yeah, so sending initial replication, we should be actually able to see the percentage. So there we go. 
So you can see it's at 13% now, and, uh, and we're pushing that across the wire. So now that that's been turned on, I want to show you what these look like after you've done it. So this is one that's already been done, 9ZDC2. I've already got this one up, and it's sending its replication. Replication status is normal. It's sending a copy of it over to Blade 2. As you can see, this shows 9ZDC2 as well. However, it's off. That's how you can tell which one is the actual active copy. The one that's running and is normal will be the one that's actually on and, and showing running at that point in time. If it's off, it's the replica. There are some settings that you can change in here that I think I forgot to put in the previous video, and some people called me on that. How do you manage the settings for replica? Well, it's down here. See this replication that's been added to the management, and note that we are doing this inside the virtual machines property. This isn't something that is at the Hyper-V level. This is something that is at the VM level. Each VM has its own settings, and will carry those settings around with it if you move that virtual machine around. Some of the new things that we didn't have before, we now have the ability to change on the fly how often we are sending our changes over to the replica server. Uh, we can change the recovery points without having to kill the VM in the process. We still do not have the ability right now to change this live. I don't know that we ever will add that. And then we have the resynchronization settings. Now, this is something I may have forgotten to co uh, cover before, but we'll, we'll do it again anyway. So, um, what happens here, and by default it will tell you, it will set this to 6.30 p.m. What happens if your virtual machine uh, fails to replicate out to the DR site for a period of time? Well, what will happen is eventually that connection is going to come back up or that Hyper-V server out there is going to come up and you're going, they're going to get established link. And it's just going to catch it up right then and there. It's going to have a bunch of packets that are sitting on the active server that are waiting to go out to your target. And it'll just catch them up unless Hyper-V determines that it has more packets that it needs to send out than what it will be uh, would cause it to take more than six hours to resynchronize over a 1.5 megabit per second. Uh, line. If that happens, it goes into what we call resynchronization, meaning it's not going to talk to the other guy until it fully resyncs and sends a, a fresh copy of that VM out to the target uh, hypervisor server. You can either override the setting and say, don't ever do it, I will come and manually change this and resynchronize it, or you can tell it, hey, at any given time of the day or night, I really don't care when or how or why, just start resyncing this thing as soon as, as, as you can. Or you can choose to maybe have this happen after, after hours. There's no date on this, obviously, because right now we're picking a, hey, if this happened next Tuesday and this thing needs to get resynced, if we get a resync operation, you can kick it off, but wait till 6.30 that night, and if it's still resyncing at 6 o'clock in the morning, stop resyncing it right then and there. Uh, so these are the settings that we now have at the virtual machine level. There is one other setting that I'm pretty sure I forgot to show, and that is under network adapter. There is also a failover TCP IP, so if you do need to have a different IP scheme out at your DR site than you have at your primary production site, uh, or the network you're going to attach to to do your uh, testing, uh, you, you can make all those changes right here and uh, give it a, an alternate IP address that would happen if this thing were to be failed over out there. So those are the settings at the virtual machine level. All of the settings that you see on the replication here doing plan failover, pausing, view replication health, getting your status report, um, this being the target or the, uh, the source, these settings being the target settings, because now we're on 9Z Blaze um, DC2, which has a slightly different set of settings, failover, test failover, uh, versus planned failover, which you can do from over here. So these are the settings, as you can see, on the source. These are the settings, I was hoping that would stay up, on the target. Okay, so the difference, for instance, this is the biggest thing that gets people kind of confused between failover and test fail or uh, 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 planned failover. Failover can only be done from the from the uh, target because the failover would mean forget the 30 second or five minute. Uh, we have lost the primary production data center. It is a smoldering pile of ashes. Bring this online now. Versus, hey, the production site is still up, and we can uh, we can bring that. Ah, come on, there we go. We can actually uh, 
plan a failover and get these guys synced up. That would be an instance of giant wall of water heading towards the data center, but it's not there yet. We still have time right now. We can do a planned failover that will catch up the two servers so that we're not missing any da data and bring this one as the as the active. All right. So uh, the other thing that you can do from here that you cannot do from the primary is test failover. Test failover is pretty neat because what it will do when I click it is creates a copy of that and it brings it up into an on offline status. So you can see that it says test. And if I were to look in the settings, you would notice under networking that this is not attached to a network. That's to keep it from colliding with my production network. What I can do with this now is attach it to my DR network and bring it up online and do all sorts of unholy things to it like ripping out metadata cleanup, all the other DCs, sees FISMO roles, um, bring him online, test that my clients can attach to him and do all the stuff I need to do. And then when I'm done, I say, hey, uh, we, are, we are now finished with this. Oh, I'm right clicking the wrong one. Right click on this and say stop test failover and it will delete this test DM uh, uh, VM so that I never have any possibility of that ever being accidentally brought online with seized FISMO roles and and he thinks that he's the master of the universe and he collides IP address and name with that guy etc cetera, etc cetera. lots of bad horrible things could happen that's the easy way to avoid those so those are kind of the biggest changes as far as uh, the the settings themselves but there is another big change that has happened on Hyper-V replica we now have this 9ZDC1 uh, that you can see is in an off state and a normal replication. Another new thing that we can do under the replication tab is say extend replication. So now what we can do is I can take this 9ZDC1, which we'll just a review on 9Z on uh, 9Z Blade 10. We have the actual active source copy of 9ZDC1. We then, just a moment ago, told it to go out here to 9Z Blade 1. Right? Now what we're going to do is we're going to send an additional copy of this over to 9Z uh, Blade 2, that third hypervisor that we've been kind of playing around with. So we'll send another copy of this out to him and we click next it should go find the the settings for 9z blade 2 we'll click next we'll pick our uh, replication interval note that we did 30 seconds we have the option to actually do this one at 5 minutes or even 15 minutes if we wanted to we can have completely separate recovery point options here uh, we can have this one happen right now get her caught up get it going I now have 9z DC 1 in three separate locations Right, you can see that this is sending. Let's go ahead and expand that out a little bit. So we're sending the init replica out. 9Z2 should now be getting that, receiving that, and um, we'll now have that extended replica. So now we can actually have multiple copies, multiple DR sites, uh, so that we we really want to keep 9Z DC1 online. This is we'll ha we have the capability of having it in a lot of different places. Okay, so as far as uh, the big changes is uh, 08 R or 2012 R2 Go and uh, Hyper-V Replica. Those are the ones that I've read about and found so far. If I find anything else that has changed on that technology, I'll do a, another a tertiary follow-up uh, to this and uh, get you guys on that one. But, uh, but for now, uh, anyway, guys, I think this is uh, probably all I really wanted to, to cover on... Hyper-V replica, as that is pretty much all that I know to talk about it uh, for now. So anyway, this has been Chris with Microsoft, and as always, I, thanks, I thank you guys for watching. If you did find anything about this useful or interesting, please give it a quick like, and uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Uh, also, my blog is at 9z.com. It's real super easy to remember, just the last number followed by the last letter, dot com, uh, which also has links to my Facebook and my LinkedIn, my Twitter, and uh, uh, all the other little social network thingies. So, again, thanks as always for listening, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Mm -hmm.